Hey, Mark. How's it going? Can you hear me, Mark? How's it going, Mark? Hey, Chris, can you hear and see me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear and see you as well. How's it going? Terrific. <laughs> it's going well. How are you? Great, thanks. How was your 4th of July weekend? Uh, it was okay. Yeah, not too eventful. How about yourself? Yeah, it was low key. Just had a barbecue with some friends and, you know, lit fireworks in the street and just hung out, caught up on some rest. How about yourself? Nice. Where, where are you? Remind me. Oh, uh, Boca Raton, Florida, South Florida. Okay, nice. Yeah, we, it's actually pretty good weather this weekend, despite a uh, hurricane nearly missing us. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, there, there was a hurricane that like flipped around to the Gulf side. Yeah, Elsa. It, it went around to the Gulf side and uh, hit him and as that, a tropical. That's not. Tsunami. That's rare, right? Yeah, it is pretty rare. It's been a while since the Gulf side has had any hurricanes, so that was interesting. Okay, interesting. I'm well, glad. Uh, glad you. Uh, you know, still have a house, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you guys? How's the things over there? Oh, uh, they're fine. Yeah, I mean, it was. You know, you probably saw in the news we've been experiencing like record heat yeah um a record heat wave especially up in the pacific northwest but it was pretty you know it stayed pretty temperate where we are um no fireworks this year so too dry too dry yeah so you just yeah. took it easy and kind of chilled out and try to keep cool right <laughs> exactly that's good that's good so um, before we get into it, um, Mark, can you just kind of give me an idea of uh, your role there? I know that you are uh, Director of Treasury at Granite mm -hmm. Construction. Um, can you kind of give me an idea of what, your, what role you play in the company's overall credit collections, accounts receivables process there? Sure. Uh, you know, I, I have a, uh, my role as far as accounts receivable and collections is typically just sitting in on the accounts receivables update meetings that are quarterly mm -hmm. in which, um, you know, the different, you know, our different business segments hold, you know, uh, collections calls, right. On a quarterly basis, uh, they manage it pretty tightly. And I sit in on those calls, you know, to, you know, to, to have them know that, you know, treasury ha has an interest in collections um, and to really just understand that their process. Okay. And to make and sure that they're on top and they're keeping on top of it. Sure. So kind of overseeing how things are going with the collections process and, and, and basically how that can, you know, applies to the overall picture as far as the treasury department is concerned. Right. Okay. And yeah. uh, do you know what they're using right now as far as tools uh, in their credit and collections process? I know Tim had mentioned that you guys are pulling DNB reports on customers. And is that is that still the same or has anything changed? I'm sorry, Tim who? Tim Tim Gentry. Oh, Tim Gentry. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah I'd say that's that's probably what they're still doing. Okay. Um, I, I you know I don't get. I, I don't get involved in that process so much, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, to the extent that we have a, you know, a large project that we're bidding in which it would be, you know, you know, a multi-million dollar project, it would, you know, my understanding is that, that treasury do, does take a look at that. I mean, anything over 10 million goes to the board of directors. And so we will request, uh, company financials right and an analysis will be done in co company financials okay yeah he mentioned that um you know granted you guys have been around for you know about 100 years and you guys have like four different operating groups um and i believe that uh, houston group is your newest uh, uh and decentralized credit operations does that sound about right yes 
So at the time that I spoke with Tim, he said that uh, he was looking for something to be more centralized as far as your credit process is concerned to kind of streamline everything across the four different operating groups and kind of uh, help you guys in your process. Does that sound about right? That sounds like it makes sense. Okay. All right. Um, so prior to this call, and by the way, I have a, two of my junior associates on the line, Ken and Tommy. Um, they're just here to kind of learn and, and kind of uh, get an idea of, of uh, what this, you know, Corterra is, is all about so they can kind of grow in their, in their knowledge as well. Sure. But uh, I wanted to just kind of um, see how much knowledge you have of Corterra and Moody's analytics. Uh, had prior to this, uh, this, the call that I made to you and this uh, demonstration, did you have any prior knowledge to Corterra or Moody's? Not at all. I mean, okay. All right. No. Well, I'll, I'll just kind of give you the, the brief overview of Corterra and Moody's and uh, just kind of give you an idea of what exactly uh, we, the role we play in the marketplace and what kind of potential value add on we can provide uh, granite construction. Um, just to kind of give you a quick background, Corterra itself. We've been around for over 25 years, and uh, I'm going to quickly just kind of share my screen with you so you can kind of get an overall picture of uh, what uh, we're all about. So let me know when you can see my screen here. I can see it. Okay, great. So this is the Corterra website, our homepage. As you could see at the top, you know, we've been recently acquired by Moody's Analytics. Uh, Moody's Analytics is a global leader in the world of uh, commercial risk and uh, analytics. Um, they, they have credit ratings that are viewed worldwide as some of the best. Uh, they have Moody's Investor Services uh, that helps uh, you know, investors kind of know where these companies are and where they stand in the global marketplace. Well, uh, the reason why they acquired us is because Corterra, prior to the acquisition, has become the largest commercial credit bureau in North America. We have over 36 million unique business locations that are being reported to us on a monthly basis, consisting of over 1.7 trillion in annual B2B transactions. And that's across 45 different industry segments. Do you have a question about that, uh, Mark? No. Okay. And construction, building materials, uh, that is by far our largest uh, industry uh, that makes up a very good chunk of our database. So uh, obviously, you know, we are relevant to, to your particular niche in that we have a lot of those small to mid-sized privately held companies, those general contractors, those mom and pops, those sole proprietorships that, you know, DNB and other uh, data providers just kind of lack coverage on. And the reason why we have such a strong coverage uh, amongst small to mid-sized privately held companies is that Corterra is number one, uh, by far the most accurate and easy to use uh, credit tool. Uh, we've, you know, constantly are making improvements and upgrades to our system so that it's more user-friendly, uh, intuitive, easy to understand credit reports. We do proactive monitoring of your entire accounts receivables portfolio providing you with daily alerts uh, in the form of emails to help you stay more proactive on top of your accounts if there's any change in risk, so that way you won't be surprised. And we are actually uh, offering our services to new members who join our network and contribute their AR data to Corterra at absolutely no cost. So our basic services of AR monitoring and alerts are free of cost. And the credit reports, if you decide to pull them, are extremely economical and uh, very competitively priced. Um, and the reason that we're doing that is because com companies that are small and privately held tend to shy away from the large companies like Dun and Bradstreet because they're so you know expensive and and so hard to use, and they kind of don't really uh, aren't really user friendly for those smaller uh, privately held companies. So they shy away from those providers and tend to flock to Corterra because of the fact that we are uh, no cost to very minimal cost, easy to use. So we have a lot of exclusivity on this particular type of data because these companies will share exclusively with Corterra and use Corterra as their primary credit tool and commercial credit bureau to pull information from 
So it's a win-win scenario. As more companies join our network, utilize our, our free and easy to use services, it kind of just enriches the database and makes more coverage uh, and, and more accurate credit reporting for companies like you and enterprise uh, businesses that uh, utilize our services, pay for premium services on the back end that support us revenue wise, but the basic services of uh, unlimited AR monitoring and alerts are at no cost and will always remain at no cost for those who contribute their data to our network. So that's the value proposition that Corterra brings to the table and how we can potentially enhance your process. Um, so that's basically what, what the background of Corterra and where we stand in the marketplace is. Did you have any specific questions about that uh, before we dive into it, Mark? No, please proceed. Okay, great. So uh, just to kind of give you an idea of exactly what specific value Corterra can bring, when uh, you and your team there at Granite Construction joins the Corterra network, you and an unlimited number of your associates on your credit and your treasury department will have access to this online credit and risk mitigation platform called Corterra Pulse, which looks like this. And this is fully uh, online, it's turnkey, so you can start immediately using it as soon as you sign up and send us your customer aging file. We work well with remote teams. Uh, we work well integrated into your current workflow. All you need is a computer and an internet access, and you can immediately access this uh, platform 24 seven. And what we'll do is when you submit your AR file to us, we'll upload your commercial customers into our database, and we will monitor them on a daily basis across these seven key factors for risk. The first factor is overall credit risk. This is predictive in its analysis. We utilize over 500 different data elements to show you a predictive score of risk of default within the next six to 12 months. And I'll show you how we calculate a credit score when we pull a credit report. Overall payments, this looks at how your customers are paying their vendors and suppliers on an overall basis. And then peer payments. This is a very unique alert exclusive to you as a Corterra member. Uh, Mark, we show you how your customers are paying other companies like Granite Construction. So as you know, industry does matter. Some suppliers in various industries get paid faster than others. So having that unique perspective into how you're going to get paid gives you some more unique uh, analysis into your customers' payment behavior. Bankruptcies and tax liens, Corterra has a direct link to PACER. So we get all bankruptcies, tax liens, civil suits, and judgments in real time. And then news alerts. This is a unique alert, another alert exclusive to you as a Corterra member. Corterra's system is designed to comb the web on over 12,000 different news media outlets to get you any relevant news articles on the financial health of your customers in real time. And Corterra goes right down to the local level. And we report on those small to mid-sized private companies the mainstream media tends to ignore. You get all of those alerts as well. And UCC filings, that's a new alert we recently added. That comes standard in your daily monitoring as well. And Mark, all of your alerts are summarized on this dashboard here, which can be customized and prioritized to meet your specific search criteria. And they are as recent as today and as old as the last 30 days. And in addition to monitoring your current portfolio, we also have this Watch Plus tab. If you want to add any future customers, vendors, or suppliers to your monitoring, it is unlimited and it is at no cost as well. So we'll watch those future potential customers on a daily basis as well. And like I said, we'll monitor an unlimited number of customers and you'll have an unlimited number of users that will be able to access this platform 24-7. And that is at no cost, simply in exchange for that monthly AR file contribution. Now, just so that I can get an idea of uh, the scope and the need, uh, about how many customers do you guys invoice on any given month, would you say? Gosh, I don't have that data. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, last time, I think uh, Tim Gentry told me that he had like 3,000 customers across your four different divisions. Does that sound about right? That could be right. Okay. All right. So it doesn't matter whether it's 3,000 or 5,000 or 10,000. We'll monitor all of them and it is included at no cost. Now to okay. help st streamline and automate the process, we'll send you a single daily email alert summary 
that looks like this. Now, what this will do for you is this will help you guys stay on top of your uh, total customer portfolio. So any customers that have any significant change in risk, whether it be a drop in credit score, they're paying other companies like yours more slowly, if there's any bankruptcies or other court filings, any relevant news alerts, any UCC filings, all of those alerts will be summarized in a single daily email alert summary. It just takes a few minutes a day to read. If you see anything that catches your eye and you want to investigate further, you just click this view tab. It'll take you back to the online dashboard and you can pull a credit report if you so desire. And that, as I said before, is part of the no cost complimentary service in exchange for that monthly AR file contribution. Any questions so far? No. Yep, pretty cut and dry. And on a monthly basis, I know you're going to like this, Mark. Uh, this will help you in your, uh, your monthly uh, reporting of your entire portfolio. We'll provide you with a comprehensive portfolio analysis, or CFO report, as we call it. This kind of reports on those key metrics in your uh, customer aging file. Of course, you have your aging buckets in this section here. In this section, you have your risk distribution of your customer base and it's stacked ranked according to level of risk and credit score. In this section, you have your portfolio risk profile quilt. We put your customers into color-coded boxes numbered one through six, depending on level of risk, color-coded red to green like a traffic signal for ease of reference. Key trends in your portfolio are displayed in this graph here. Here's your top 10 account balances and summary of alerts. On the second page of the CFO report is your high risk accounts. These are your problem children. These are the customers in your portfolio that are on a high risk of default and decline, dropping credit scores, slowing down payments. You might wanna keep a watchful eye on these customers here. And on the last page of the CFO report is your high collectability accounts. This is what I like to call your low hanging fruit. These are the customers in your portfolio that are paying others in the Corterra network faster than they're paying you. So you can basically use this page as a reference in your collections efforts to help reduce the DSO on some of these outstanding balances. So basically these customers should be paying you faster. I know you're probably interested in this. This applies directly to you. See how that works? Yep. Any questions so far? No. All right. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to pull a credit report and what you get on the credit report. Now, anytime you want to pull a credit report on a company, all you have to do is type in the name of the company in the search bar at the top. And city and state is usually the only other key data elements we need to drill down. Uh, we're going to use Cargill as an example here because Cargill is one of the largest privately held companies in North America. They're also a member of our network and gave us permission to use their report for this demonstration. So you'll click on Cargill's corporate headquarters here, and then you click buy report. As you can see, the reports are very economically priced. They range anywhere from $2.50 for a single page flash report, all the way to $6 for a multiple page deep dive report. We've also incorporated the deep dive report with an instant credit decision based on a credit scorecard that you can customize to meet your own specific criteria. But we'll use the default as an example here. Click on buy report. While the report is being generated, you're gonna get an instant approved, pending or denied decision window pop up here. It'll show you the scorecard details, the variables we pulled directly from the credit report and a recommended aggressive or conservative credit limit based on a percentage of this company's highest balance. See how that works here? Yep. Any questions so far? No. All right. How does this compare to what you guys are currently using? I'd have to see what we're currently using. Um, I don't have, I'd have to research that. Okay. I don't want to give you the wrong answer. Sure, sure. No worries. Uh, well, here is the first page of the credit report. And now this is the $2.50 flash report. As you can see, you get all of the vital information at a glance. Uh, you get the ultimate parent or who owns this corporation and where they're located. You get their link ID, that's our unique identification system. The risk behavior scorecard with our Corterra score at the top. This is our credit score. 
Mark, the way this credit score works is kind of similar to a consumer FICO score, except it's a 100 to 900 scale, 100 being the worst, 900 being the best on whether there's severe risk of payment delinquency in the next uh, basically 12 months. So you see here, Cargill's an 876 out of 900. So they have a very low risk of delinquency in payment. Payment rating score or CPR score, that looks back over the last three months on how this company is paying their vendors and suppliers. Once again, it's a 100 to 900 scale. Cargill's a 674 out of 900. It's above average. They have about a five days past due balance on average. Payment risk segment score, that's that color-coded chart I showed you earlier on the CFO report, numbered one through six, depending on level of risk, color-coded red to green, like a traffic signal. So they're five out of six, color-coded green, so they're consistently lower payment risk over the last three to six months. Industry benchmark, this gives you an idea of how fast they're paying relative to others in their industry. Looks like Cargill's paying relatively faster, about 5.4 days beyond terms versus an industry average of 6.5. Spending growth index, this gives you an idea as a percentage on how Cargill is spending their money. Are they on a growth trend? Are they stagnant or are they declining in their spend? And this is all based on this number here under buying behavior. So what we do here, Mark, is we take all of the total known spend being reported on Cargill and we aggregate it out. It looks like it's over $1.6 billion in the last 12 months. We separate that spend into three major categories, materials, operations, and shipping. Now, why does that matter the most in a credit report? Well, it gives you an overall macro view on how this company is doing financially, whether it's a risk of default based on their spend. Now, if you take an example like Toys R Us, the retailer that filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy a few years ago, in the months prior to the bankruptcy, people had no idea they were about to default in payment. Their operation spend was relatively unchanged, but their materials and shipping spend relative to operations were on a rapid descent. So those were red flag indicators to members of Corterra uh, that Toys R Us had a high risk of default because they weren't purchasing additional materials or products. They weren't shipping those products out to customers. So guess what? They weren't generating any additional revenue. And they were burning through cash and operations at a consistent rate. So Corterra had obviously notified our members in advance that Toys R Us had a high risk of default and decline based on this spend and trend. So they were able to take proactive measures to mitigate that risk, whereas other companies that had no idea this was going on had to be more reactive and deal with the closure of stores, the Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and trying to collect on those outstanding balances. So that's basically how this unique information, exclusive to Corterra members, helps you make more insightful credit decisions. And that's all based on this number here, 327 companies reporting. So what that means here, Mark, is we have 327 unique businesses that are members of the Corterra network that are reporting on their payment experiences with Cargill. So if Grant, Granite Construction had you know, uh, Cargill as a, as a customer and you were reporting your trade file to Corterra, you would appear in this report as number 328. See how that works here? Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm pointing this out to you, Mark, is rest assured when you share your trade file with Corterra, uh, your identity is anonymized. All, all you appear in the credit report is a number under a company reporting, and then we aggregate your balance and aging under an industry vertical. And that's evident as you go further into the report under family payment experience and payment aging details. And then we get granular with payment behavior by industry segmentation. Here's the materials payment behavior breakdown. And of course, under that we have building, brick, stone, and tile under the materials. So that's possibly where granite construction would fall under. Here's operations and here's shipping payment behavior breakdown by industry. Other payment behavior by industry segmentations. And then once again, it outlines how does your industry get paid by this company? number of providers, average balance, average days beyond terms. So that kind of gives you an overall macro view on how this company pays other companies in your industry. And then it just gets granular as you go further into the report with material spend, operation spend, and shipping spend insights. Other purchases, 
We also have uh, community payment ratings. These are like Yelp ratings, growth cues, recent headlines. These are all clickable links, corporate demographics, list of executives, competitor information. These are all lookalikes to Cargill. Here's Cargill's corporate structure, all the companies and subsidiaries under their corporate umbrella. And then we also have location intelligence under various locations across the country, corporation filings, UCC filings, those come standard in the deep dive report, bankruptcies and tax liens if there was any, Corterra score uh, details and the reasons for the credit score, other scoring mechanisms, we have uh, insurance and motor carrier information, SEC filings, fleet info, and then rounding out the report, you have pension plan information, and then of course, paycheck protection program and government contracts, if any. So it's a very in-depth report. It's over 30 pages of information. And with the instant credit decision, uh, it's only $6 a piece. Um, but it gives you some very unique information that only Corterra members can get. And uh, like I said before, that's how your information would appear and be used in the report. And it is all anonymized and kept in the strictest of confidence. Uh, so do you see how that, uh, how that all works and all comes together now? Yeah, I got a question. Um, sure. So what is free of cost versus what is, needs to be paid for? Okay. Well, the monitoring and the daily alerts, as well as the CFO report, are all free of cost. The only time that you would have to pay for anything is if you want to pull a credit report. Uh, you know, in the so the credit report, as I said, range in price anywhere from two dollars and fifty cents for the single page flash report, which is the first page of the deep dive, or six dollars for the uh, multiple page deep dive report with the credit decision scorecard. Okay. So that's it in a nutshell. And then there's also another thing called a boost or batch of pen, which is like portfolio scoring. If you want to extract and score your entire customer portfolio in mass and append the data to your file, that's uh, considered another premium service that Corterra does charge for. But like I said, it is optional. And none, right. of, you know, none of the credit reports and the premium services are mandatory. Uh, you can pay as you go. You can pull as little as or as many reports as you like, or you can pull no reports and uh, everything else, the monitoring and the alerts are, are no char no charge. And then with respect to the AR file contribution, is that monthly? Yep. It's only a once a month AR file contribution. And if you look at my screen here, this is the format that we would uh, require that file to be sent in. All you have to do is simply identify your aging buckets in an Excel format like this, uh -huh. provide the matching company name and address of the customers. And then you either, e you can email that uh, file to us in an Excel text or CSV format, or you can just uh, do an FTP upload on our secure server. So we can email it or FTP upload. Yep. Okay. And let's see what else I was going to ask. I can't remember. Off the top of my head, maybe it'll come back to me. Well, this is good stuff. Um, can you email me this deck? Be able to email me this deck so I have it for reference? Sure. Okay. Excellent. And then, you know, I'll. Um, as I dig in further and, and see what we are doing as credit, this is good information to have, you know, to see what's always interested to see what's up there. So thank you. Okay. And how, so do you see value in adding this to your current process? I mean, being that it is at no cost, of course. Uh, there's potential. Okay. You know, I, I need to evaluate our, for our, our current process. All right. Sure. And uh, if you want more of a uh, complete side-by-side uh, -side comparison, mm -hmm. um, we can also do what's called a uh, launch monitor report, which is a hit rate and ROI analysis. Um, so 
you know, run us right alongside DNB or whatever. Um, not that you have to replace them. You can use us right alongside them. But just send, if you want to send us over your customer aging file, uh, we don't need the, uh, the, the aging buckets, but just the company names and addresses of your customer base. And I'll show you how much are matched in our database. Uh, and I'll show you based on the last 12 months of alerts and the average medium balance per supplier, I'll give you an identified risk and a, an exact ROI on uh, having the monitoring in place based on those companies that were likely to fail uh, over the last 12 months. So if you want to do that, I can do that in, 